question. How does a sleepover at Grandma sound tonight? We'll order a pizza. Awesome. Binge Pipe has mixed feelings about presenting You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe. We paid a creative firm $2 million for this name. Happy Holidays! What a wonderful time of year to cherish the people around you and how much smarter you are than them. Well, it smells like everyone is here. And I see we've got some gawkers in the audience, which means I'll be adding an audience bonus to every question. The more audience members get a question right, the less bonus money goes to the players. But if the audience screws it up, there's going to be a lot of cash on the line for that right answer. And we're off. First, getting away from it all. Hashtag so free. If Wi-Fi hotspots corresponded with volcanic hotspots, what selfie would I have the best chance of immediately posting to Instagram? A thumbs up in the Australian outback, duck lips at Yellowstone National Park, pretending to be surprised on Cyprus, or a glimpse of my butt in a mirror on a cruise to Antarctica. I love this part. A volcanic hotspot is where the Earth's mantle is so hot that it pierces through the tectonic plates. My ideal vacation is five minutes of outdoors time, followed by five minutes of Twitter time, followed by one some more. Rinse and repeat. And how the audience do on that one? Congratulations, your friends are morons. That means the right answer is worth a little extra. Consider that your birthday present. It's time for 50 Shades of Plays. If Christian Grey told Anastasia he needs audience members on three sides of his playroom, in theater terms, they'd be performing unspeakable acts on a spread stage, thrust stage, grind stage, or missionary stage. Okay, what'd you pick? Keep your chin up. A performance space that penetrates the auditorium, allowing audience members to sit on three sides, is called a thrust stage. And in live productions of Fifty Shades of Grey, the first row would be called the splash zone. Why do we do it with three? I call this one Good night, darkness on the edge of town. And one, two, three, four, it's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one, tell me if it's a character from a famous children's book, a character from a Bruce Springsteen song, or both. Answer quick, you'll only have a few seconds to choose between from a children's book, or from a Springsteen song, or both. And you're all doing this together, so pay attention. All set? Here we go. Curly Pearly. Go Kart Mozart.
turns out most people are average. Weird, but you all, you failed the best. Actions have been taken to ensure you have a better playing experience. Oh, that means it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Using the screw makes it harder for all the other players to answer in a variety of pleasurable ways. And you'll receive a bonus for each player who chooses incorrectly. What would we do without you? Now that's what I call consumer engagement. I don't need you anymore. This one's known as tailor-made titles. What's in a name? Letters. Letters are in a name. Yeah, solve that one, Shakespeare. Which of these people would write Taylor in the blank space that asks for their patronymic name? Taylor Swift, James Taylor, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, this'll be good. Player two has invoked the screw. You know what they say, go big or go home. Okay, let's take a look. In this case, the tailor would be a nickname, and it's one that has failed to catch on. <coughs> the patronymic name is also known as the family name, surname, or last name. It's something you can pass down through the generations, like those James Taylor cassettes my mom won't let me throw away. Nice screwing, player two. Enjoy your cash. Here's one I like to call, Dear Postmates, pulls send me fud. Oh, I'm trying to order a falafel from a Mediterranean restaurant with my phone, but it keeps coming up as no search results. Autocorrect is busted on my phone, and I don't know how to spell any of these words. Which of these searches is typo-free? Mediterranean restaurant falafel? Met well, well. <laughs> Player 4 just used that screw. Better crank up your brightness. Let's see who got it. Ah, I'm so hungry. Come on, that's not it. <laughs> and search. 20 results found. All right. Uh, while I'm ordering stuff I'm gonna need tonight, I should figure out how to spell diarrhea relief medicine. Way to screw player four. Have some cash. <laughs> Round one is over. Show me that scoreboard. Currently, player four is in the lead. And down here. These players could use a little help, and there's no shame in that. So here come the screws. And keep in mind, round two screws have crazier effects. Plus, they earn you a bigger bonus for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't be shy about using them. The rest of you better answer fast if you don't want to be screwed. Oh, and did I mention all the money's doubled in round two? Now that's good game design. Six trombones is not a parade. Next up, is there a Mrs. Worldwide? If the rapper Pitbull wanted to honor the origins of the Pitbull, what sexy club scene should he show in his next music video? A Rottweiler? So watch out. Player one just screwed everyone. Don't forget your password. What'd you guys pick? Pit bulls were bred by mating a bulldog and a terrier. Thankfully, we've made it through the only dog sex question in the game. Actually, I can't promise that. That screw is a good move, player one. I believe this belongs to you.
Mon béret a rétréci. 7. Here's one for you. We can help you enjoy us. Ah, uh, that sounds really creepy. Oh, wait, I, I know what this is. Binge Pipe recommends. Because you insist on twins playing twins, we think you'd like The Social Network, The Parent Trap, Sister, Sister, or Full House. Hope you like what you picked. Tia and Tamara Maori are twin actresses who played twins on screen. Twas then I learned to heed the winds of it. And now, don't eat in the pilot's cabin. And uh-oh, dress up kit's dime store. It's time for a flicker fist nutscum. Think fast on this one. The longer you take, the less cash you make. Okay, focus up. Look at the gibberish phrase and tell me what common expression it rhymes with. Fritz got cockpit pie ants. And pay no attention to that punctuation. It's easy. Because it's not complicated. This is not space shuttle engineering. So, what was it? Get on with it, shall we? Na, 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 na. Next, down under and around again. If you've heard Iggy Azalea's song, Fancy, you already know she's in the fast lane from LA to Tokyo. This road would be what percentage of the world's circumference? 11%, 20%, what's this? Player 6 just dropped a screw on you guys. Hey, who's ready for a little identity theft? So, what'd you pick? This is almost half the circumference, but completely wrong. First things first, this answer ain't the realist. The fastest distance between LA and Tokyo would be around 5,478 miles, which is about 22% of the Earth's 24,901 mile circumference. Sadly, the fanciest thing about me is the feast I provide my cats. Nice screw job, Player 6. Enjoy your cash. Oh, and it looks like we've got some name changes. Yeah, that feels right. Introducing Temp to Squirm. I think it might have a temperature, but all I have is this axillary thermometer. Where should I put it? Up my butt, in my ear, in my nose, or under my armpit? picked what? Look, I'm as surprised as you this isn't the right answer. Axillary thermometers go under your armpit. But when I'm not using it, I, I do keep it in my butt. Ow. Welcome to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, well, excuse me for living. Here's your clue. 
Repetition, repetition, repetition. Honestly, this one's the result of a sick mind. Good luck. wins well done player four you won by a small margin but you still technically won just like i still technically graduated with a degree in culinary arts oh and just remember you don't know jack enjoy this exclusive behind the scenes content from you don't know jack Funny story, for that uh, Iggy Azalea question, I still have no idea who that is. The directing and writing team tried to explain it to me for like an hour. It, it, it was like they were speaking gibberish. Anyway, eventually, I just read the question phonetically, and I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, it's, look, it's just one of the tricks of the trade. Thank you for joining us for this Binge Pipe bonus content.